welcome to Essential 100, our journey during 2023 through the message of the Bible in 100 readings. Our readings are taken from Whitney T. Cunningham's book, Essential 100, published by Scripture Union. Each week we have a reading from the Old Testament and one from the New to help us reflect on the message of the Bible, God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Today we are encouraged to read John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. But first, an opening prayer for today from Whitney's book. Father, I would like to encounter your son, Jesus Christ, in a new and real way today. In his name we pray. Reading John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father has made him known. In his book, Essential 100, Whitney T. Cunningham writes, Ever since Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, God has been working out his plan of salvation. In the Old Testament, we see how God revealed himself to the people of Israel through signs and wonders in Egypt, through giving them the law and then through the message of the prophets. But something was still missing. God's people kept turning away from him. They just couldn't get right with God on their own. That's why he took the dramatic step of sending his own son, Jesus Christ, to earth 2,000 years ago. What God had been saying to his people for years and years in a variety of ways, he now said in person. It would be hard to understate the significance of that single event, the birth of Jesus. In fact, the coming of Jesus Christ is the most important moment in all of human history. John's opening phrase in our reading today says, in the beginning. It parallels the first verse of Genesis. John wanted us to know that the coming of Jesus was literally a new beginning. He uses a somewhat mysterious phrase, the Word, to describe Jesus. What's the difference between a thought and a word? 
A thought is, is something that you keep to yourself. A thought is something not shared with anyone else. A word, on the other hand, is a thought expressed, made real, shared with others. Whether it is shouted, whispered or signalled. What God had been saying to humankind from a distance for so many years, through signs and wonders, through the law and the prophets, he now says, in person. Jesus Christ was God himself, the living word. Jesus Christ is God himself, the living word. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. The sad thing was that people still didn't get it. They didn't understand who Jesus really was. We see that in, in John 1 verse 5 and 10. That's still true today. Many accept Jesus, but only as a good man or a great moral teacher. But perhaps C.S. Lewis offered the best response to such a view of Jesus in his classic book, Mere Christianity. C.S. Lewis wrote, I am trying here to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. C.S. Lewis wrote, that is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sorts of the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon. Or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronising nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. The good news is that God loves us and through Jesus has made a way for all people to become his children. No longer is our relationship with God dependent on sacrifices or keeping a detailed set of laws as in the Old Testament. All God wants us to do is receive and believe Jesus. That's how we can discover the incredible blessings God wants to give us. The best thing, a personal relationship with him for all eternity, is what he wants for all of us. Is that what you want? A question for us, can you honestly say that you have received and believed in Jesus? If you can't, well why not do something about it today? Go on. Ask him in. And a closing prayer. Father, it's mind boggling to think that you came to this earth because you wanted a relationship with me. I do receive and believe in Jesus. Please draw me closer to you today. In his name.